Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. The Lord is great. He's powerful. He is mighty. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. It is time for us to bless the Lord. Time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. And it's time for us to magnify him because he is good. Not only is he good, he is great. He is better than that. He's there. I don't think there is anything that I can think of to describe just how powerful the Lord is. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Good morning, Jesus and Nora. I miss you. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. The Lord is is waiting and watching those that will yet come to serve him, to come to worship him at this wonderful hour of the morning. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning to you, Sister Barbara. Yes, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what God has for us on this morning. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you, God, for you are our King. God, you are our light. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you made us to be, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for coming into our midst this morning, for allowing us to get a good night rest on last night and allowing us just to work, wake up this morning, Lord, with you on our minds. We thank you, Lord God, that you are ever present with us. And Lord God, there is nothing that is too hard for you. And so, Lord God, in the midst of our trouble and pain and trials and struggles and all the different things that we go through in life, Lord, we thank you that the word says that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. As a matter of fact, you said that you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death with us, O oh God. And therefore, because you are with us, we will fear no evil. We will not fear anything that might try to come up against us. Lord God, we're going to move in the vein and in the way and in the plan and the path that you have created for us, O oh God. And Lord, we thank you for this time this morning, O oh God, as we come to gather ourselves together to gather our minds together, O oh Lord God, and our hearts and our spirits, Lord, that they will be continued on you. Lord, we thank you for the steadfastness of your word, the steadfastness of your people, that they, Lord God, will continue to guard their hearts and their minds through the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, that the enemy has no, uh, has no place with us. He has no way with us because we recognize all we have to do is call the name of Jesus. Yes, and the Bible says that demons will flee. Demon can't stay in the room that we're in. No, he cannot because we have the power of God living inside of us. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing your spirit to come and dwell with us and be with us. But Lord, most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who you sent to die on the cross that we would be free that we will be healed, that we will be delivered and set free in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, O oh God, for all that you yet shall do. Pray that you will take this word and allow this word to be engrafted to the hearts of the people, that they may be changed in the mighty name of Jesus. God, before I leave, I just want to say a special prayer for Sister Angela Denard and the Davis family in the, in the loss of her mother, their grandmother. Lord God, you know all about the situation, but Lord, I want you just to comfort the family and give them peace, even as they go through this difficult time, Lord, of mourning and grieving their loved one. Lord, help them to understand, Lord, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, yes, that there is a day of rejoicing that we all shall have. We thank you, Lord God, for it right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen to all of you that are coming in the room. Cousin Jean, so good to see you. Good morning, Brother George. So good to see all of you that are joining this morning meditation. Let somebody know that we're on this morning. I'm telling you because the Lord has something that is mm -mm good for us. Good morning to you, Sister Sherry. Good morning to you. I have to have a question to ask of all of you. Um, good morning to you, Sister Donna. I... Um, my my granddaughter is with me um, as she is uh, most weekends, and she was singing a song, and the song that she was singing um, had to be do with um, I think it's called Miracles, and she just was singing the song, and I didn't know um, who sang the song because it was a great song. You, it was, she was singing, "You are a God of miracles, you are a God of wonders, you are a God of power." I believe. I believe. And as she kept singing that song, I knew I had heard it, but I wasn't really sure. So I got on the internet and I looked up the song. And as I looked up the song, Sister Donna, I began to sing the song with her because I thought it was a great song of rejoicing. 
It was a great song to let the Lord know how much we love and trust him through all the trials and tribulations and struggles that we were going through. But don't you know, my granddaughter said to me, she says, lovey, I don't want you to sing the song with me. I only want to sing the song by myself. And I thought, mm, that's interesting. And so for a moment, people of God, for a moment, I was quiet and I did not sing the song with her just for a moment, even though it was it was welling up in my belly about singing the song about God and about the miracles that he had wrought and about how wondrous he was and how powerful he was. And, and just to let the Lord know through that song that we believe in him, that I believe in him. And then after a few minutes, I thought about it. I said, you know what? That is a trick of the enemy. I will not be silent. This is a song of joy. It's a song of rejoicing. And why is it that she gets to sing the song and she gets to rejoice into the Lord and she gets to shout unto God and she gets to dance before the Lord, but yet she doesn't want me to. She wants me to close my mouth. I want to know people of God, anytime that someone asks you to close your mouth or to be quiet or not praise God like you want to praise him, or maybe you've been in a situation, maybe you've been in an environment where you thought that you could not wave your hands or raise your hands or you thought you could not open your mouth and give God some praise. Maybe because you thought people were looking at you and, and I see you, Cousin Gail, and you thought people were looking at you or you thought they were um, um, looking funny at you, wanted you to be quiet because they wanted to have a peaceful service or whatever they wanted to do. And you didn't open your mouth and you didn't say anything. Oh, people of God, I got a little I get a little uh, uh, upset with my granddaughter. I'm thinking, why is it? that I can't give God praise? Why is it that I can't give God the glory that is due to him? But I recognize people of God, not just this situation, but many people, many are not opening their mouths. They're not giving God praise. Yeah, they're not doing it, Sister Donna. Sometimes we even see in our church, I see you, Lady New, sometimes we even see in our churches where the praise team may be going forth and, oh, well, they're working hard trying to get the, the rest of the congregation in tune and in sync with the power and the presence and the, and the spirit of God that's in the place. But how often do we see they just sit there with their arms folded, thinking, acting like it is it that, you're, that, that, that uh, they're doing you a favor by being there. People of God, God wants us to open our mouths and he wants us to sing a song. Matter of fact, he wants us to sing a new song unto him. But as I was thinking about this meditation and thinking about how my daughter, my granddaughter, wanted me to shut my mouth, how she wanted to stifle the praise. Now, certainly she wasn't thinking of that for me, but she wanted to stifle the praise by not allowing me or not wanting me to sing the song with her. Glory to God. I know you right, Sister Nora. I thought about the scripture where the word of the Lord says, that if you are silent, the rocks will cry out. Oh, that's found in Luke chapter 19, verse number 40. The Bible says, and he answered and said to them, I tell you, if these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. Oh my God. If you hold your peace, the rocks will cry out. What are you saying, Pastor Tina? What I'm saying is the Lord is worthy to be praised. The Lord is worthy to be glorified. The Lord is worthy to be edified. The Lord is worthy to be lifted up. And what he's saying this morning, I, good morning to you, Sister Cynthia. What he's saying this morning, if those that love God, if those that are redeemed, if those who have been saved and set free, if those people, my God, that, that know who God has created them to be, they'll know that God brought them out of the rain and out of the storm, out of, out of the hell, and brought them out of all kinds of situations. If those people will not open their mouth and give God some praise, the Lord here is saying that the rocks are going to cry out. Because God is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And listen, there's power, people of God. I, I want you to know this morning. I, there's power. I see you, cousin Tamika. There, there's power in your praise. And sometimes we have been beat down so much. We have been so frustrated. We have been so depressed and so distressed. We have been locked out. We have been lost People of God, we have been beat down and we have been, oh, talked about, abused and misused. So much to the point where it seems like the praise is not on our lips. 
Oh yeah, that, this seems like the praise cannot come up, my God, from our belly, out of our mouth. But as we look at Luke 19 and 40, I want you to know that there's life in your worship. There's power in your praise. And as we think about it, glory to God, as the, the Lord is speaking here, the Lord is saying, listen, I'll tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And how many times have you heard somebody say, there ain't no rock going to cry out for me. I'm going to open my mouth and give God the praise. I'm going to give him the praise that he needs. And why is that? No matter what the situation is that's going on in your life, sometimes people of God, things happen to us and we don't know why they happen, but they happen. But if you trust God and believe him, oh, I'm telling you, he will turn that thing around for your good. You think it's not good. You think it's a mess. You think, glory to God, that things are going to happen. I see you, Sister Brittany. You, you think that things are going to happen. Good morning to you, Sister Jill. But listen, if you just continue to hold on to the hand of God, hold on to the faith that the Lord has given to you, just like with Joseph, when his brothers tried to sell him into slavery, they tried to really wanted to kill him. But the older brother said, no, we're not going to kill him. And they tried to sell him into slavery. They wanted to get rid of him. They wanted to get rid of him because they thought that he thought that he was better than them. When all he was doing was sharing a dream, sharing a vision that he had gotten from the Lord. Sharing something that he thought perhaps was going to happen. And, and, the, and the young men, the, the brothers, evidently they thought the same too. And so they wanted to get rid of him. People of God, how many times does somebody want to get rid of you because you're a threat to them, that they are intimidated by you? It isn't anything that you've done, but it's the power that's working within you that allows other people to see that what God is doing in your life is powerful. But sometimes, yeah, yeah, they become intimidated. They become, glory to God, they are the ones that become ah, depressed and distressed because of your power. And don't you know that no matter what they do, no matter what they say, they can't take the power of, that God has given to you away from you. The, 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 the writer here is saying, if you keep quiet, the stones will cry out. If you keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. If you don't bless God, oh my God, in no matter what the situation is, no matter what the struggles are, you got to bless him. Psalm 95, it says, come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and with song. People of God, what am I saying? I'm saying that you've got to open your mouth and I know it's hard. I know it's rough. I know that there are many that have thrown you under the bus. But listen, as you get back up and dust yourself off, give God the praise that you are yet here. Give him the praise this morning. Good morning, Jesus of Gloria, that you are, are yet alive. Give him the praise that you yet have a voice in your mouth. And my God, the Bible says there is power of life and death in your tongue. Yes, and you shall, my God, be better because of the power that is also in you. The Bible tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and give him thanks. Bless his name. Why does the Lord tell us to do that? Because he's worthy of our praise. Why is he worthy? Listen, if the Lord doesn't do anything else for you, if he doesn't, if he doesn't give you any more money, if he doesn't allow you to get up, my God, from your bed uh, tomorrow night, if he doesn't do anything else for you, he's already done enough for you to praise him for the rest of your life. But as a matter of fact, in Hebrews 13, 15, it says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. Oh, it says do it continually. Do you mean continually, Pastor Tina? Yes, continually. Maybe you've, maybe you've lost a loved one. Praise God. Maybe you've lost a job. Praise God. Maybe you've lost your way. Praise God that God is still there to lift you up and help you and heal you and place your feet back on a solid foundation. 
Yeah, Luke 19 and 40, it talks about praising. And I believe, I believe my God, as I, as, I, as I allowed my mouth to be quiet for about three minutes, I believe the Lord was speaking. Then he was saying, you know what? <laughs> you better open your mouth and give me some praise. Because throughout this particular passage of scripture, the Lord is encouraging every one of us not to withhold your praise for him. Because what it's saying is to us that worship and praise, they're, they're fundamental to your growth in God. Worship and praise, yeah. Have you ever thought about, my God, it, being with someone, and, and it could be a, 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 a husband, it could be a wife, it could be a, a friend, or just a relationship. But if you never, ever tell that person how you, how you feel about them, Tell them how much you care about them. If you never say to them, you're doing a good job. If you never say to them, I appreciate you. What do you think is going to happen with that relationship? Oh, let's think about it this morning. If you never give them any accolades for anything that they do or anything that they have done. If you never say thank you, men, for your wives cooking dinner for you every day. If you never say thank you, women. For your husband's taking care of your car and cleaning it out and putting gas in it. If you, if you never say thank you to your children, my God, for loving on you. and My God, for doing the very best they can and for making you proud. If you, if you never say thank you, how do you think your relationship is going to go? How do you think you're going to be able to cultivate a great relationship if you never give anybody praise? For the things that they're doing. But listen, by praising God, you know what we do? We acknowledge God's greatness. We acknowledge his goodness. We acknowledge his faithfulness. We acknowledge my God. We acknowledge his kindness. We acknowledge his love that he has for us. So much love. My God, the, the Bible says there is no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper I know that there are things that you think are happening against you, but listen, the Bible says no weapon, no weapon that any person forms against you, no weapon that the enemy forms against you is going to prosper. You will make it. You will get up from this situation. And so we're praising God because he's sovereign. And when you praise him, when you glorify him, yeah, that praise, it, it draws us closer and closer to God. It gives us a better connection with the one who created us. And so as I say this this morning, as I say, don't withhold your praise. Open your mouth every chance you get. Oh, you got to give God some praise every chance you get. Give him the glory that is due him. Every chance, every day you wake up, make it a habit, people of God. Just like you make it a habit, my God, of going to your kitchen, getting some food and breakfast. You make it a habit. Maybe some of you make it a habit to exercise every day. Maybe you make it a habit to say good morning to the person that you're sleeping with. Maybe you make it a habit, glory to God, to, to drink so many ounces of water every day. Make a habit of thanking God. Make a habit of thanking God for his mercy, for his blessings toward all of us. Oh, yeah. Make it. Oh, God, I got to listen. When you are grateful, your your gratitude shifts your focus from the things that you don't have to what you do have. It, it shifts your focus, my God, from the hard times that you've been in with to the times that God wants you to be in. It, it shifts your focus from pain to peace and it shifts your focus from sorrow to joy. If you just give God some praise. Because when you do that, you, you cultivate a heart of, of joy. Listen, people of God, it's the same as with someone else. When you cultivate, a, when you focus on gratitude and thanking people for the things they've done, it'll be very difficult for you to hold grudges. Very difficult, my God, for you to be bitter and mean and mad at someone. When you focus on gratitude, oh, that's what the Lord wants us to do. Because what he's saying is the things that you think you're lacking, you're not lacking. Because the Lord is saying, I can give you everything. He says, as a matter of fact, I will supply your every need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. People of God, there are things that I know that you need. And maybe you're complaining about the things that you don't have. 
But the Lord is saying, instead of complaining about what you don't have, thank God for what you do have. Maybe you don't have a fine, fancy car. Maybe you are. Maybe you don't have, glory to God, a house on the hill. But thank God that you have a smile to share with somebody else. Thank God, my God, that you have a voice that you can use and you've got legs that you can walk. Thank God that you've got hands that you can raise to God. Thank him. It, it is a matter of fact, even through the difficult times, I know in difficult times it's, it's hard to praise God, but you know what? Praise him through the challenges. Praise him. Trust him enough to know that whatever you're going through, that you believe that he's going to work it out. That was the song my daughter, granddaughter was singing this morning. I believe, I believe, I believe, God, you're going to bring me out of this situation. I believe you're going to work it out. I believe, Lord God, that even though I'm going through the fire, through the flood, through the storm and through the rain, I believe, God, when you bring me out, I'm going to be much better than when I went in. Oh, I'm going to be talking better, Lord God, and I'm going to be connected with people who are better. Oh, when I come out of this situation and when I come out, oh, I'm coming all the way out. I'm not going back in. I'm not looking back. I'm not turning back. But in the difficult times, oh, my God, my story to God, he's, he's saying, I'm saying to you, offer up a sacrifice unto God. Oh, yeah, whatever it is. Offer it up to him. Because just like glory to God, the, the psalmist said in, in Psalm 100, enter into his presence with thanksgiving, praising him. Even in adversity, it strengthens your faith. It strengthens your faith, allows you to trust God, trust him in his power, trust him in his knowing, trust him in his sovereignty. Oh, I dare you to try it. I dare you to try it right now. Just to begin to start praising God. I know you're going through some things. But just open your mouth and just begin to praise him. Oh, I know it's early in the morning. And I know there's somebody else is around and you see them. But don't allow anyone else to stifle your praise. Don't allow them to keep you from getting closer to God. Through praising him. Oh yeah, through recognizing glory to God that, that he is all that you need. I, I'm excited about this this morning because I recognize that the Lord is saying that if you can trust me through it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you out of this situation. Yeah, he's saying, he's saying sing unto God a new song. Lift up your voice unto him and allow God, yes, to lift you up out of that pit of despair. As you begin to praise him. God, when you, when you praise him, you can't think about all the negative things that are happening in your life. When you praise God, don't you know the enemy can't even bother you? When you're praising God, when you set yourself in a place, glory to God, and you've surrounded yourself with the presence of God and with worship. Oh my God. There's no better place than I'd rather be than in the presence of where the Lord is. And as you begin to praise God and things begin to happen in your life, situations begin to turn around. Yeah, there is a shifting in your very environment. And people will wonder, why is it that you can still praise God? Why is it? How is it that you can still smile when you just lost your mother? How is it that you can still have a joyful heart? When you've just lost your job, how is it that you can still sing songs of Zion? Oh yeah, when, when your relationships are all messed up, how is it you can do it? Because you're giving God praise. And my God, and when you do that, oh, and somebody else sees it, don't you know you can share that testimony with them? That through it all, through every circumstances, the Lord continued to see you through. He never took his hands off of you all while you were going that. Don't you know, my God, when you are in God, everything that happens, glory to God, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that if you are the called according to the, the proper purposes of God and you love him, that everything will work out for your good. How do you believe that today? I believe that today, that everything is going to work out for my good. It may not start out 
looking like it's going to be for my good. But because I know God is in it, I know God is in my life. I know that he is king of kings and lord of lords over my life. And I know that he is not going to allow anything to happen to me that's going to destroy me. Not to utterly destroy any of you. Oh my God. But just keep walking in the way that he has you walking in. And as you share with others about God's goodness. Oh my God. As you share with others about the power of God. As you share with others about how God worked in your life. How he brought you out. Oh yeah, you were you were crying, you were in trouble, you were in pain, you were in despair, you were in distress, you were frustrated, you were confused. But you can say to them, God did this thing for me. And when you do that, come on, you will encourage somebody else to hold on just a little while longer. I'm encouraging all of you today to hold on just a little while longer. We've been going through some things. Oh my God, I've been going through things all my life. All my life. But I've yet to stop praising God. I'm going to give him praise anyway. Because I recognize that no matter what it is, it's not too hard for him. No, oh, he already knows about it. There's nothing that I'm going to bring to him that's new. That he's going to have to think about what to do with it. Oh, no, 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 no. He's seen absolutely everything under the sun, under the heavens. He's seen everything. And when I can be a testimony, when I can be a living testimony for somebody else, when I can be a living example for somebody else, don't you know that God is going to trust you with so much more as you allow God's love and his mercy and his grace just to surround you so that your interactions with others, my God, will be able to transform somebody else's life. Oh, people of God, the Lord wants us to be transformative. He wants us to shift the atmosphere. He wants us to shake the foundations. But we do that through our praise. And we do that through our worship. Oh yeah, we do that, my God, because it's not, and not just on Sundays, people of God, not just on Sundays, but as you begin to make a habit, incorporating prayer, and praise into your daily life, you become more in tune with the presence of God. Oh, you become allowing God to draw, uh, to, to, you can draw your his strength from you. And then you can find peace in the love that he's given to you. So the people of God, uh, we've got to be those people whose lives are centered around praise so that the world can witness the beauty that's living inside of us. As we are in communion with God. People of God, we can't be silent. We cannot be silent before God. You were created. We were created. All of us were created to give him glory. And as we are created to give him glory, we, we simply cannot remain silent. No matter what anybody says. No matter how they look at you. Oh, there's a scripture in the word of God that says, don't even look at their faces. Don't look at them. But look at God and give him the praise. Whatever you're going through right now, I want you to know that you're coming out. Glory to God. You are coming out of that thing. What did Jesus say? He said, listen, if you don't praise him, the rocks are going to cry out. But we decree and we declare today that there will be no rocks, no stones crying out for us. We will not be complacent. We won't be fearful of the word of God. We will open our mouths. Yeah, we will not be quiet anymore. No, it doesn't matter what people say they're going to do or what they say they're going to, uh, how they're going to move around us. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the song that, that, that my granddaughter was singing at the end of it, it says, bye bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye pain. Bye-bye hurt. Goodbye sorrow. Goodbye oh, frustration. Goodbye depression. Bye-bye. Because you believe in God. 
And because you believe in God, you have to be bold to make a bold statement to the world that you will not be silent, not silent in church, not silent at home, not silent on your job, not silent on the grocery store. People of God, oh yeah, allow you yourselves to be that testimony for somebody else that God is faithful to you. And as God is faithful, you be vocal in your praise and you be confident in the hope that God is going to save you, that hope that God is going to deliver you, that God is going to heal you, that God is going to work out the situation. Oh yeah. Yeah. You thought it was bad, but 30 minutes ago, right now, I'm telling you, God is already working that situation out because as you praise him, Oh, as you give him glory, that lets him know how much you trust him. Trust and believe that God has got this all under control. God's got it. He's got it all under control. Father God, we thank you. God, we bless your name so much, oh God. Lord, we love you so much. We appreciate you, God, so much for the things that you do, God, on our behalf. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for when we, oh my God, when, when we don't believe you. And Lord God, when we doubted your word and, and when we thought that we were just going to keel over and die. The Lord, right today, we decree and we declare, Lord God, that we are powerful in you. And Lord God, we continue to give you praise because that's what we were created to do. As we continue to give you praise, Lord God, we thank you that you will draw us closer and closer to you. And as we're drawing closer and closer to you, Lord God, that means that we've got to get further and further away from the enemy. The enemy can't control us. He can't confuse us. No, he can't stop us because you sustain us, oh God. And so I thank you, Lord God, for your sustaining power right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for healing us right now, God. I thank you for healing cancer and healing diabetes, oh God. I thank you, God, even, my God, for the infections that may be in people's body right now, Lord God. You're drying it up in the name of Jesus. I pray, my God, for my niece. I pray for you, Layla, that God will continue to heal your body. Continue to heal and dry up that infection that you might, glory to God, be vibrant as you have been vibrant. Oh, allow God's power to transform every one of us. And I thank you, Lord God, that it will. But Lord, as we, we shed off those things that are not like you, we shed off deceit and we shed off envy. We shed off strife and we shed off bitterness, oh God. On a Monday, they might have, thank you, Lord God, that you're healing us right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Yes, Lord God, that is sweet peace, God, in this place that we are in. So, God, I speak peace to every home, to every bedroom, to every bathroom, to every closet, Lord God, right now that people have set up as a sanctuary for you. I speak peace, oh God, yes, Lord God, that in, oh my God, that even in times of turmoil, in times of frustration, in times of trouble, in times of confusion, Lord God, that we will yet give your name praise. We will open our mouth, Lord, and praise the King of Kings and praise the Lord of Lords, oh God. We will do that, oh God, because you are worthy of our praise, Lord God, and you do not change. No matter what is going on in our lives, oh Lord God, you have not changed. And because you've not changed, God, you are still good. You are still awesome. You are still wonderful, God, and you are still powerful, Lord God, in our lives, Lord. And I thank you right now, God, for doing what it is that you do, Lord God, to keep our feet, God, set and stable on you, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, even for the word of God that David said is hidden in our hearts, that we might not sin against you, Lord God. And Lord God, as we continue, Lord God, to bless your name and continue to praise you, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are drawing us closer and closer to to you, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that even as we profess the name of Jesus, oh God, demons have got to go. Whatever it is that is in our life that has hindered a move of God, Lord God, we praise you through it, oh God. Yes, and we will worship you, Lord God, King of kings. Worship you, Lord of lords. Worship you, oh Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to be in our midst right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, I pray again, my God, for Sister Angela, Sister, and her family, oh God, in the, in the loss of their loved one, Lord God. Continue, God, to allow them to see, God, you 
as they don't focus on the thing that they think is negative, but focus on what they have. Yes, that focus on the on the joy and focus on the memories. God, focus on the legacy that she has left for them. And then, Lord God, we pray that you will continue, God, to put a song in their mouth and a praise on their lips. Not just them, but every person at the sound of my voice. That there is a praise on your lips. And not only will you go to church on Sunday or Wednesday when you go, will you open your mouth and give God praise. But as you do that, oh, I'm telling you, the people of God, that you will find the Lord being closer and closer to you. And you will find that peace that only you need. And you will find that joy that the Lord has. And he will give it to you as you give him praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And bless the Lord. People of God, I feel a sweet presence of the Lord in the place that I'm in right now. And as that presence, my God, is moving over every one of you, just begin to open your mouth and just bless the Lord. Oh, bless him because he's good. Bless him because he's powerful. Bless him because, my God, he created you. And bless him because he holds you yet in his hand. He will not let you go. He will never leave you. Hi, oh, my God, whatever it is that you need, it's in this atmosphere. I speak healing right now over your mind. I speak healing over your bodies. I speak healing over that spine. I speak healing, my God, over the knee, over the, the inflammation. We call it down in the name of Jesus. Oh, I speak healing over your eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no cataracts. I, I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. My God, somebody has a bad toothache. I speak healing over that right now in the name of Jesus. I, my God, there's peace in this place. There's peace in this place. Oh, my God, I speak promotion to those of you who are looking for promotion. And not only that, open doors, open doors of opportunity, opening doors of employment, opening doors right now. The Lord is doing it for you. He's doing it because you're giving him praise. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.